Well, hello everyone, and we are here with our master program, Applied Statistics with Network Analysis, and we have next in a row event devoted to our master program at Higher School of Economics. And today we have very exciting topic because today we plan to merge somehow some uh, statements, some ideas of doing consulting both in academic environment and in industry. So we have a lot of participants today. We have also discussions. So please get ready with your questions. Oh, First of all, we will go with oh. just a second. Sorry. <laughs> yes. So first we will go with uh, some small presentations. Then we will have some statements from our discussions. And after that, we'll move on to the questions. So we may consider this event as a round table, as a discussion or whatsoever. And first of all, I would like to introduce our first speaker for today, Stanislav Moiseev. So Dr. Moiseev, because uh, he's a representative um, from industry and also from academia. So he's somewhere in between these two different work environment. And I think he has a lot to tell to us. Uh, he also teaching at our program. And I think Stanislav will share with us very valuable thoughts. So here, Stanislav, please, the floor is yours. You may share your presentation and we are ready to move on. Yeah, uh, thank you, Rina. Thank you for the introduction. Yeah, and uh, basically, since today uh, uh, I'm the first speaker, uh, I'm the first who is going to present, uh, I decided to uh, give kind of introductory presentation. Uh, uh, I will share with you some thoughts uh, devoted to the basic definition of uh, the role of statistical consultants. Uh, I also want to talk about uh, uh, this role and some requirements mm -hmm. which we currently have uh, to the profession of uh, statistical consultant. And of course, um, uh, I want to give some examples uh, of what statistical consultants uh, might do, uh, which type of questions he or she uh, might ask, uh, I, my, my answer uh, uh, in field of the academia, in field of uh, applied or industrial project. And I will try to uh, give some directions to uh, our discussion, which will uh, follow uh, my presentation. So yeah, uh, that's basically it. And uh, uh, Irina was correct, correct from the one side, uh, um, I'm analyst at the uh, Laboratory of Applied Network Research, and I'm also teaching statistical consulting uh, course in our master program. From the other hand, I'm a partner at a uh, uh, group of companies called Aventica, and I'm co-founder and uh, chief growth officer of uh, uh, our uh, company Networks. Uh, we are doing social media listening, and some of my examples, of course, will come from projects which we uh, currently uh, do or which we did in the past. So they will be very, very practical. Yeah, and uh, just to begin, yeah, I um, I want to begin with this very simple but very important question, a very important question for those of you who is who are thinking about uh, applying for our program. Yeah, it's basically a question about who you will become right uh, uh, in the end. And actually, uh, it is used to differentiate between statistician, right, who can do the math, and between statistical consultant, who also, of course, can do the math. But there is something else, right? And of course, we may try to talk, uh, to discuss this difference in terms of some hard skills, and soft skills, uh, but we will do it later. I want to put it uh, in the beginning in the most uh, simple way. Uh, I really like this uh, site from Mary Kwonsi. She's, uh, she's practitioner from statistical consulting field from Northwestern University. Uh, 
Uh, and she, uh, she wrote that consultant actually is a person who able to translate the subject matter into a statistical problem and then translate it back, right? So basically, when you work as a consultant, it's very important for you to be able to understand what your partners uh, in the field of academia or your partners in the field of industry and business trying to do, what kind of problem uh, they have. Uh, it is your role to translate this problem into the language of statistical questions, then to translate this problem into the language of uh, statistical methods, methods of problem solving. Uh, and then when you come up with some result, of course, it's very important for you to be very clear uh, in answers, which you are uh, going to give to the people who are may not be practitioners practitioners and experts in the field of uh, statistics, uh, in the field of uh, statistical methods. Yeah. Uh, and going further, um, consultant might uh, play different roles. And usually this, uh, these differences, they are based uh, uh, on the uh, on the place uh, which uh, she or he uh, occupies uh, 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 in sense of employment, yeah. Uh, sometimes uh, consultants might be part of some team, right? Uh, uh, it's it's very very uh, often case when you are working in some in house team. For example, you may be a part of big data science team, uh, data science team in some like corporate like bank financial institute, or maybe even university, right? Uh, and when you work in-house, you really place a place in a team, and this this still team play require you to uh, fit in processes, to understand general logic of projects, which all of your team uh, is doing right now. And so this is one possible way of doing consultants job. Another possible way is to, is, uh, to be an external expert, right? When you work uh, at agency, like, uh, for example, our company networks, you always aside, right? You are not a part of, uh, uh, not really a part of problem which your client might have, but you a partner and you always trying to help, right? And But at the same time, you, uh, in some sense, uh, in some sense, outside or, uh, uh, of the team, and it also uh, uh, provides you with different requirements to the role which you play, but still you're kind of the same statistical consultant. And another possible situation, and actually when we are talking about statistical consultant, most people think that this, this is something which we are talking about. Uh, you might be just advisor, an external person who is maybe self-employed. Who who uh, uh, who is not a part of some uh, big corporation or some agency? Who just you know, like in uh, uh, some famous movie, just he he's coming to solve some problems. When problem is solved, he just uh, he or she just uh, uh, going away, right? And this is also the way uh, it's possible for. Uh, uh, people who finish uh, our program to become a self-employed professional. Yeah, and, uh, but this this type of role of consultant also has some specific requirements. You are all alone. Uh, you, uh, you're responsible for the results uh, on your own. But of course, of course, uh, you have lots of in independence and you may choose what projects to conduct uh, on your own, yeah. So this is this is some basic this basic def definitions, right? A statistical consultant is the one who uh, who is able to translate some kind of business or academic problem into language of uh, statistics and to translate solution back. And he or she may be a member of a team, maybe part of some agency or just uh, uh, independent professional. Anyway, uh, he or she still be consultant. And he or she will work with some questions. Uh, but what kind of questions uh, a statistical consultant might deal with? Yeah. Basically, uh, 
and, and I will also uh, here give the broadest definition, which is uh, possible maybe. Uh, so the role of statistical consultant is answering questions and all these questions are data related, right? Because for example, uh, if you will uh, work with you know, psychologist or historic uh, historian or I don't know, politician, he may, uh, he may answer uh, questions uh, without relation uh, to some data. He may answer questions on the basis of his or her expertise, uh, on the basis of common sense, so on and so forth. So statistical consultancy is strongly related to data which we have. And actually it starts with data. If we have no data, there is no place for statistical consultants. Uh, uh, and uh, this is the you know, starting point. And uh, now I just want to give you some examples of such questions and examples of project which uh, which fit into the area of uh, statistical consultants. So, uh, for example, as a statistical consultant, you might face with a question how to define key topics in millions of social media publications and messages. Yep. Uh, uh, kind of a simple question to ask, but it's quite hard to answer, right? Uh, you may know or may not that every month, uh, only in Russia, uh, users of social media, they produce uh, 1.5 billion uh, messages, yeah? Uh, and it's this, 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 this data, uh, they are not like, uh, up to date, but this data from the end of 2022. So basically, after all sanctions uh, and after all regulation which uh, come uh, into, uh, into our reality, people still produce a lot of different content in social media. And it is very useful information. So next Monday, we are going to also discuss in the seminar of, of our lab how important mm -hmm. uh, such source of information became today for uh, brands, especially for B2C brands. And sometimes social media, uh, it's unique source of information, uh, which uh, may be used to uh, answer some, such, some questions. For example, here is... Uh, um, uh, our research project. Uh, it's uh, it is open. You 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 can see a uh, QR code uh, on the slide, and you can uh, uh, scan it and uh, deep dive uh, to the report. Uh, it is in Russian, but anyhow, anyway, you will understand all pictures and graphics uh, uh, definitely. So this project was conducted by Aventica Networks, uh, uh, but the idea of this project. Uh, uh, was suggested by uh, uh, public organization uh, called TPTAC. Uh, and uh, they are dealing with uh, ESG uh, topics and sustainability topics. Uh, and they develop in these uh, topics and trying to emphasize the importance of uh, this topic in, uh, uh, in current Russia. Uh, and basically, uh, they for, for several years, they conducted research devoted to the mapping of different uh, ESG and sustainability initiatives, which uh, uh, happens uh, and happening uh, in, uh, in in all all all, all, all the Russia. And this year, we we'll collaborate to analyze what people really do and what people really talk about when we are. Uh, talking about sustainability uh, topics. Uh, so basically, they usually uh, ask experts and make surveys of uh, civilians. But uh, this time we decided to, uh, to analyze the whole field and to understand what the regular people uh, really think when we are talking about sustainability. So what we did, we collected uh, uh, eight uh, millions of publications which somehow were related to the topic of sustainability. And then we come up with uh, this statistical question. We uh, uh, we had to define key topics. Somehow uh, uh, group uh, uh, all these publications which we collected uh, uh, around you know, some similar topics and some general themes. 
And uh, uh, we applied some algorithms of natural language processing to get clusters of this data. Uh, these clusters then were, were, were combined, united in uh, uh, several topics, uh, which then we, you know, then uh, combine these topics into some streams. And we get finally uh, 26 streams, and these streams were described uh, in uh, in our uh, in our report. So basically, this is one example. It is an example of a question which uh, uh, might be asked inside of some agency which is dealing with kind of big data, and uh, uh, this is a question which um, requires um, uh, knowledge in natural language processing yeah, to, to answer it. Uh, another example uh, uh, comes from, not from social media, so it's it's some hard stuff, because uh, this is an example about analysis of uh, data uh, which is gathered from uh, uh, sensors uh, on uh, suburban trains. Yeah, somebody? maybe owner of some suburban train company want to answer the question, how can I optimize efficiency of my suburban trains? Uh, efficiency in sense of timing and efficiency in sense of energy, so on and so forth. So you see that again, we have some data in the beginning. Uh, and again, uh, but, but uh, but the but question is totally different, right? This is, this is not about topic modeling. This is not about, uh, analysis of uh, uh, what people say. It is totally different type of information, but basically same statistical consultant might uh, join this project and might try to apply his or her knowledge to answer such type of question, right? And of course, it will require totally different methods. Uh, it's not, you know, clusterization. Uh, yeah, it's... it's uh, it's a method of uh, analysis of causal relationships between, between different uh, the thousands of different uh, variables, which might describe how really train goes from point A to point B, and how many trains uh, relate to each other, and how uh, and uh, and so which variables are important in sense of. Uh, this uh, efficiency optimizations and how my, uh, we might affect on them. Yeah, and uh, why I love this example? Uh, because uh, this is exactly the case when uh, uh, you have to be a part of a team. Yeah, because for creation of such efficiency system optimization, it's not enough to be just a statistician, right? You, you may not, uh, you cannot do that alone because uh, you uh, have to be part of team with uh, also some uh, maybe uh, IT developers who will help you to put all this data into some system and to create some dashboard. And so uh, people who require this optimization will uh, get this data in a friendly way and then they will be able to understand and to analyze it uh, in some uh, in, in real data format and so on and so forth. Yeah, and that's one example. Uh, it is also very practical, but uh, I put it here because it is a real example uh, uh, from uh, our course devoted to statistical consulting. Uh, last year, uh, our students work with uh, data uh, from uh, Russian TV streaming platform. Yeah, and... Uh, our students, uh, uh, they were trying to answer question uh, how to find the effect, uh, which recommendation system of this TV streaming platform uh, have on its uh, business efficiency, right? So uh, the task was basically to understand uh, whether, for example, good recommendations affect on lifetime value of clients or not. Yeah, and uh, you, 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 you again can see that we start from from the data, uh, and again it's totally different question. Now it's not about hard stuff. Uh, it's about software platform, right? 
uh, and uh, it's not data about movements, energy or timing. It's data about you know, quality of recommendation system and data uh, about some maybe business metrics, which might be uh, dependent variables here. Yeah, and uh, mm, yeah, these three examples, uh, and uh, this is all uh, in this section which I want to wanted to share with you, just to give you a taste, right? That uh, statistical consultancy questions they really comes in many colors, and you know uh, the magic and. Uh, uh, the beauty of this uh, job of uh, statistical consultant, especially if we are talking about consultancy in agency or in the self-employment way, it's you never know which questions you will face with, right? You and uh, uh, of course it's require you to be in some in some sense uh, brave person because one day people may ask you, you know, to optimize efficiency of a train. Next day, people may ask you to um, uh, to uncover the relations between the recommendation system and business metrics. Uh, other day, people may ask you to you know find some topics uh, in millions of uh, different messages, and you have to be ready uh, to deal with them. Yeah, and here you come up with question how to do it right, right? Yeah, because uh, it's quite. A, Difficult and it requires you to know different fields and different areas of uh, statistics and not only statistics, right? And now, uh, now it's time for us to briefly discuss some hard skills and soft skills which uh, statistical consultant uh, should have, right? And in our course, uh, of course, <laughs> we started with knowledge in statistics, right? Uh, uh, in the in the starting point, uh, consultant is a statistician, and he or she they uh, he uh, have to know uh, how to uh, which methods exist, right? How to apply these methods uh, and, and procedures to design statistical consulting project? How to analyze the data and how to derive some insights, yeah, from from this analysis. Uh, also, it's very important uh, for a consultant to have some computational skills, yeah? Because, uh, you know, nowadays, uh, most, uh, most complex uh, computational procedures require you to uh, know special programming languages, you know, like R, Python, or sometimes C++, right? Uh, you have to know special packages which uh, uh, may help you to uh, solve specific problem you have to know how you know to put uh, all this together so on and so forth and this is very important when talking about uh, hard skills yeah and uh, this is you know some kind of uh, brief description of different types of hard skills which were uh, happy to deliver to the students of uh, our program uh, and of course, we are working on developing soft skills, yeah, uh, because we started from that. You uh, have to be able to translate, right? Not just to understand how to apply statistical methods. You have to be able to quickly understand how this, for example, business problem, problem relates to statistical problem, how to uh, say it in statistical words, right? And translate it back. And you have to be a very nice person, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, I, from my point of view, it's basic requirement to any job you do, right? But when we are talking about consultancy, uh, yeah, you have to deal with people. Uh, you will have to negotiate with them. You will have to explain them why these complex procedures, which you are going to apply, is really necessary. Why you will need three months, right, to data preparation. Uh, and it's important for you to be very clear in what you are saying in the beginning, what you, when you are trying to understand and negotiate, negotiate about uh, the goal and the problem. And very important for you to be very nice and clear in process when some problems may appear, when 
sometimes you uh, underestimate time and you you will ask for you no know, uh, uh, shifting deadlines so on and so forth and you must be very clear uh, and uh, uh, expert and professional in the end when you deliver results yeah uh, that's why uh, in our program we also work on development of communication skills and we our students they're doing lots of presentations uh, uh, on, on different uh, courses and uh, devoted to different topics because it is a part uh, of uh, our job uh, and part of uh, work you will have to do if you will decide to become statistical consultant. Yeah, and uh, in, in our course, we are talking about some basic rules and uh, I just uh, want to share with you some secrets. Yes, information available usually only for students, but yeah, today we will talk about it to open our discussion. Uh, some basic rules, you know, what you have to know, uh, which you have to follow if you want to be a great statistical consultant. Yeah, first of all, you know, uh, but this, this is a rule not only for uh, consultants. If you are if you are a sociologist or psychologist, so if you anyhow your job is related with some kind of data, right? Even if you are making coffee in some coffee shop, don't attempt to analyze data until you understand what is uh, uh, what was or is uh, being measured and why, right? Because it is a starting point. So you you can't try to formulate the hypothesis before you understand uh, what is the nature of your data, what happens when the data was collected. Because, you know, uh, in our job, so in, in my experience, half of problems comes from this stage, right? And uh, you will build all your analysis, all your projects on this data. And first of all, you have to analyze what is, uh, your uh, fundamentals. And then again, uh, it's very important to report results in a clear way. So, and this is crucial, crucial uh, for uh, for our job. You know, because sometimes we have to, you know, we have to apply complex methods. You know, even neural networks, right? So nowadays, neural networks is something common, right? Because they are uh, people talk about it people talk about different complex uh, deep learning uh, and the machine learning algorithms it, yes yes of course i know your nets. but when you will try to explain uh, to somebody who wants just to <laughs> classify you know some data and to understand what kind of uh, customers they have uh, in the database you may uh, deal with uh, you may deal with some problems because uh, it's not very simple yeah, to explain how does it work. Yeah, these uh, levels of uh, these hidden levels inside. How to random three algorithms works, right? Even you know, uh, in uh, in our course, I share some some examples uh, about top managers of huge companies uh, uh, who you know left disappointed, my left disappointed from the presentation because they just do not understand how this clustering procedure works. So it was too complicated. So researchers and consultants might do great job, but then somehow in the end might not be very clear and the effect of this job uh, would be not so efficient. Yeah, that's why you have such rule. Use your common sense all the time, right? When you uh when you formulate your questions, when you're trying to clarify what you have to do or you no, uh, not have to do, uh, when you're talking with your with your clients, uh, when you're trying to understand whether you're really clear uh, on your slides or you need to clarify something else, yeah, uh, uh, it is some basic sense. Uh, uh, I'm not trying to say that if you will just follow these rules, you will be great statistical consultants. But uh, uh, this is at least necessary for you uh, to uh, do your job well. Yeah, and uh, final section uh, uh, of my presentation is to how to see this difference. I already uh, told you this uh, idea that consulting comes in many colors. And uh, we might 
we might uh, see many points of differentiation, right? Uh, there are some differences uh, in the role of consultants uh, uh, in the field of academia and uh, in the field of industry. There are and lots of differences uh, in the role of consultants uh, in in-house uh, employment and in agency employment. Of course, and it's very interesting, yeah, to differentiate. What is the difference between statistical research and statistical consulting projects, right? Because it should be uh, some uh, differences because people usually do not uh, name same things by different words, right? Yeah, and all of these questions are, all of these uh, differential points are uh, open uh, for discussion and I suggest us to start. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Stanislav, thank you. Thank you very much. That was very, very insightful. I liked a lot the slide about different roles of statistical consultants. So I think mm -hmm. that some roles also could be shared. Mm -hmm. And I do agree with you that when you work with the projects and when you act as a statistical consultant up to some extent, you have to choose the right methodology in the first place, right? And then you have to persuade your customer that why you choose this methodology, why it is valuable and what sort of result it might bring. Because sometimes I do agree, it might be this um, conflict point that, uh, for example, your customers, they used to work with certain methodologies and your advanced views do not fit with their vision, right? So you have to be very persuasive here and explain why this will bring some result and why this will help uh, for the specific project. Well, uh, this was really great. Uh, I will also a little bit later tell about the project that uh, our students worked with uh, Stanislav in our course in statistical consultant consulting. Uh, right now, I would like to invite uh, the head, acad the um, academic advisor, right, uh, supervisor of our program, uh, Doctor uh, Ivan Klimov, to talk a little bit about statistical consulting in academia, because here uh, Stanislav right now, he plays this probably bridging role between academia and industry. And he can share his ideas both about statistical consulting in academia and in industry. And sometimes there might be different tasks, sometimes different modes of operations, right? So let's uh, give the floor to Ivan Alexandrovich and let's listen, right? So you're welcome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Irina. Uh, thank you, Stanislav. Thank you. Uh, I think it's a uh, very important uh, and great uh, sphere uh, of, uh, for our discussion. Mm, uh, because on the one hand, uh, we are um, in uh, academia, and on the other hand, uh, we are on um, uh, we, we are participant of uh, uh, different uh, research projects uh, or um, consultation se uh, sessions, and so on. And um, uh, today, I uh, want uh, to present and uh, to discuss uh, an example of a study that was really conducted uh, five years ago, it seems to me, uh, by um, a group of uh, HR specialists uh, in one uh, large Russian company. Um, uh, uh, with this story, I want to demonstrate the need for, uh, for a comprehensive uh, examination of research uh, as Stanislav uh, already uh, told about it, uh, and um, a comprehensive examination uh, on the basis of which managers make uh, managerial uh, dec uh, decisions. And uh, I also want uh, to light a, a light bulb uh, indicating the possibilities of our master's program. Um, the mentioned uh, study uh, yeah. Sorry, oh, yeah. Uh, was focused on employees of uh, the marketing department 
uh, of uh, that company. It it uh, company has uh, it seems to me uh, uh, more than uh, ten thousand uh, employees, and uh, in that marketing department uh, there was uh, 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 there was about uh, fifty people, uh, and uh, that uh, fifty people became a participant. I was a reviewer of uh, the analytical report uh, prepared by the authors of uh, that research. The object of the study uh, was uh, to evaluate cont the contribution of each of, uh, of that uh, employees uh, to the work of the department. The author decided to study the network of interactions and network analysis was chosen as a basic methodology. The data was collected um, by a questionnaire, and uh, uh, that was a, uh, a real survey of uh, all employees, uh, all, all 50 employees. Uh, what issues have been studied? Firstly, it was the study of the volume of outgoing and incoming communication. Secondly, to identify the leaders at outsiders of business interaction. Thirdly, to identify barriers in solving work, uh, work task, uh, to see the efficiency of employees uh, in the performance of their functions. As a result, uh, that kind, um, that type of network of interaction was obtained. And uh, you know each point or, uh, or on it uh, is um, a specific player. Uh, it's a it's a real person. Uh, the, then the network uh, has been cleared um, of uh, 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 redundant communication lines, and uh, as a result, uh, the next graph uh, was uh, received. Uh, was update, uh, uh, obtained. And uh, two features uh, of the interaction network uh, are visible here. Uh, as, uh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, pay attention to the circles two, three, and four. Employees uh, who uh, du duplicate uh, each other's functionality are shown here, two, three, and four. Someone more, someone less. And also, uh, please look at circles five and six. Here are the groups of employees who are least involved in the internal interactions. And in addition, interaction with colleagues is when indirectly, and it, uh, it, it was mediated through one or two more significant employees. I think it could possible to uh, to, to see. Uh, based on the results of this research and analysis, based on the analysis, the company has reduced fired uh, the number of uh, employees of the department. Approximately, it was ten people were dismissed. Uh, and here, look at this quote. Uh, I really love it because their communication function is poorly developed. <laughs> they do not influence the dissemination of information and their ability to form public opinion due to a small number of weak connections in also practically not developed. So, and so on. I really love it. Uh, so, what did I pay attention when I uh, got uh, acquainted with the results of this study? Uh, yeah, what? Well, yeah. Uh, firstly, the concept of public opinion was chosen as a main theoretical construct. It was a bit uh, unexpected for me, but uh, nevertheless, why not? Uh, but then I discovered another surprise. Public opinion was defined as a result of 
personal face-to-face -face interaction of employees in the real physical space of the company. Then the author formulated that the functionality of the network is evaluated on the basis of the degree of personal cooperation with each other, not mediated by email or phone. So do we understand the logic of the author? If an employee does not participate in personal interaction, it means he is not able to form to public opinion in this um, department. And therefore, the functionality of the network and uh, corporate interaction is reduced because of him. Uh, look to the circles uh, five and six. Uh, they have the largest number of outsiders. So three people from the fifth group were dismissed and also two people from the six uh, were also dismissed. The fifth groups is analysts and the sixth group is SMM managers. So uh, what does this example says? Uh, what conclusions can we draw? Ideally, I want uh, you to share your thoughts with me, uh, but uh, in my turn, I will formulate uh, three theses. Uh, wait a moment. Yeah. Uh, 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 okay. The first thesis. It is good to know the possibilities of the method and uh, be able to apply it, but this is not enough. The researcher needs to see the role and place of the method in the structure and log, uh, logic of the whole study. The second thesis, the quality of the analysis does not compensate the quality of the collected data in any way. Garbage in, garbage out. Valentina Koskova, <laughs> uh, favorite, favorite phrase. And uh, the third thesis, the quality of the data set is determined not only by purpose of the study, but also the chosen basic theory. A good theory allows you to uh, competently operationalize working co uh, concepts and make a valid tools. And uh, in conclusion, let me uh, uh, offer you uh, some moral lesson. Our knowledge of the world is no more accurate than the optic we choose to study. It. And this optics consists of theory, tools, method, features, strategy of data analysis, and uh, accurate interpretation of the obtained results. So in... Um, uh, in our master's program, we try to teach exactly all of these research elements. Thank you. Ivan Alexandrovich, thank you very much. So just brief comment. May we assume that for the presented case, the business problem and the research problem, uh, they were poorly formulated? Uh, I don't think so. Um, wait a moment, I uh, try to, yeah. I think the problem is uh, that um, uh, the uh, HR, uh, uh, the, the authors of uh, that research, uh, they really did a good job in uh, network analysis, yeah. Uh, but uh, they uh, didn't pay attention uh, to the basic uh, theory. And they choose uh, something uh, that they thought uh, it, uh, 
um, good for understanding and uh, for explanation. But uh, the basic th th theory of public opinion uh, um, became a, I don't know, uh, like a rabbit hole. Uh, that uh, uh, and, and they suddenly fall into it, uh, and they uh, uh, couldn't um, uh, couldn't uh, coordinate uh, all uh, all the uh, all another elements of uh, their study, and uh, they choose uh, um, I think uh, in, uh, uh, incorrect or wrong. Uh, uh, a basic uh, hypothesis uh, about what uh, internal interaction or business interaction is by itself. Um, uh, and uh, uh, as a result, um, uh, despite of the theory, despite of uh, uh, well done network analysis, despite of uh, all interpretations and uh, statistical uh, analysis, uh, they make wrong conclusions. That's it. Okay, okay, so I see. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, it is my turn to speak up a little bit, right? So I will share my presentation and I, um, I will talk a little bit about statistical consulting in our master program. I am deputy head of the laboratory, International Laboratory for the Applied Network Research, and I am also working uh, with the program. My name is Irina Pavlova. And here, very briefly, I will just discuss a little bit how the course, so here we are talking right now about just one single course in statistical consultant, uh, how it is integrated in our master plan. Uh, so we have uh, our two years master program. Uh, so the general direction, it is applied mathematics and informatics. So the program is fully taught in English. And the specific name of the program is Master of Applied Statistics with Network Analysis. So when we move on to the content of the program itself, we can talk about developing the skills according to different trajectories. So this could be probably more in terms of business analytics. It could be more in terms of academic track. So what we have here is computational social sciences. And definitely for all our students, we also work with developing skills in social network analysis. But it is up to students to choose how to shape their trajectory with the projects, elective courses, with uh, doing master thesis, and so on. So we have different requests. And as a master program, we try to address it differently to develop the skills to become data analyst. Or for the topic of our today's meeting, we can talk about statistical consulting, right? So we managed to work with uh, different statistical methodologies, programming skills, network analysis, uh, mass disciplines, applied data analysis, so different colors and shapes. And when we come to our uh, study plan. So here we have very general structure of the study plan. I would like to emphasize that during the second year of our studies, we have a specific course, which is called Methods of Statistical Consulting in the second module. So it will be November, December of the second year of studies. This course is taught by Stanislav Moiseev, right? And he talked a little bit about that. So what I want to emphasize here, this is a compulsory course, but by this time, so this will be uh, one year plus one module and a little bit more of studies with our program, we assume that our students already master some skills in different disciplines. And during this course of statistical consulting, they can act as experts, as statistical consultants. So definitely this is not like full industry role, but at least we can practice to do that. 
for an offline program, we had analytical workshop where we used to provide pro bono services to different student projects and high school of economics uh, faculty projects. We announced such a call, we played such a call when uh, different researchers and students who had some questions with their projects or their course paper uh, could come to our uh, laboratory and formulate those questions. And our students have to serve a specific amount of hours working pro bono once again as volunteers uh, on those projects. So they had already basing on their expertise and skills by this time, it is one plus something uh, months of studies with the master program to provide, to um, uh, suggest some solutions or ways how to work with the project. So that is a really good practice. So this was one approach how we work with this course. And the second approach for online students that we introduced last year was uh, as presenting one single universal data set from real world practice and our students working in small groups had to provide to come up with certain solutions. So we had a data set from a company, a startup founded in, I checked, I went online and checked, in 2013, a startup providing a smart TV apps development. So this recommended system, right? And uh, this company has collected some data. Definitely, they couldn't share all data they have with us because we have NDAs and so on, right? Uh, but something that could be shared with our students, uh, some, um, I would say, a set data set that our students had to work with. So they had to think about research and business problem. And uh, business problem could be for any company, what? That is about efficiency, right? Financial indicators, how increase number of subscribers, how to earn more and so on and so forth. Uh, and our students had to come up with some sort of solutions, analyzing the same data set. And all the presentations, they were absolutely different. So students, had their own choice of different methodologies. Some students worked with, uh, I would say, multivariate data analysis. Some uh, used time series methodology, categorical data analysis, some machine learning uh, methodology, uh, regression analysis. So students try to show and approach the problem basing on the skills, expertise, and their knowledge. And I think that all the presentations that we had, all the results, they were different. And I think that um, people from industry who offered this data set uh, somehow saw some meaningful insights in this presentation. So uh, this is some sort of example. So here I show the structure of our study plan uh, just to demonstrate what sort of skills already we may have by mid of the second year of studies that our students, they already capable to work as statistical consultants. Maybe there could be some critiques, but still we strongly believe that by this time, our students already can manage uh, these problems, different problems and to provide, suggest some solutions from for real world projects. And just brief remark here, this is about the timeline for the application for our program. It is still open. Uh, it will be open until September 15th, but we strongly encourage to submit the portfolio and the documents and to register the program uh, as soon as possible because uh, evaluation and checking all the documents requires some time. So to be on the safe side, it is recommended to step in a little bit earlier. And here is very briefly the elements uh, for the portfolio uh, that has to be submitted uh, in the system. We do not have any special exam. We admit the students uh, 
basing on the portfolio. So there are some obligatory documents, requirements as the basic education for, for, for example, we cannot admit a person without uh, basic education uh, in the program. So we have to have interview proof of knowledge of English language because the program is fully taught in English. And also we have some additional documents. So here probably I will stop uh, that is a little bit was a little bit about statistical consulting in our program. And uh, right now, I would like to invite our discussants. We have a couple of discussants here. So some people prepared the talks and some uh, are discussing. So uh, we have a lot of people today who work both in academia and industry. And that is really nice to see different views uh, at different angles. So first, I would like to invite Alexander Pahomov. He's a uh, oh, high school of economics know. PhD student. I'm sorry. Uh, yes. Uh, 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 can we switch to the Ruslan Yusuf uh, because uh, he has, ah, okay. he has uh, only 15 minutes. Okay. Well, Alexander, okay. sorry. So, so, sorry, we have uh, some changes uh, in our schedule. Yes, we have a special guest today. So I thought that we, we will just spare this as a special guest, as the cherry on the top. But yes, let's, let, let's invite Ruslan Yusuf, he, who is the founder and... Um, uh, partner of the company Mindsmith, and also he's a specialist and expert uh, in the domain of technological trends and information security, and probably uh, also could talk a little bit on this topic of statistical consulting and provide also some insights. So, Ruslan, please, you're welcome. Thank you so much. I'm very happy to be here, Alexander. Uh, my, my, uh, I apologize for the interruption of the schedule. I will have to go in like 10 minutes, uh, so I will try to shorten my speech uh, within five minutes. I have a few observations. First of all, it's a great pleasure to be here and to listen to all the presentations, uh, especially, uh, well, uh, about the, 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 the master's program. What, what I observe as, is that there is no AI in the in the curriculum and it should be there definitely and i would uh probably encourage you to uh reconsider uh practical tools for the analysts and for future analysts let's say right in front of me i have a github page open and this page is about an ai powered uh, archive uh, research assistant which is a great tool you just um have a collection of papers you put them into the analyst and you can talk to them but uh and there are many 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 different uh different tools that have uh arisen within the the last uh, six months and i think uh uh working with ai agents and building ai agents is uh, is a skill number one for for many and especially for the academia uh uh, in a wide sense. So probably uh, this should be some angle of the program. Uh, however, there is a, a strong drawback uh, in relation to the current, um, well, I would say cancel culture. Many, many of the tools are not available in Russia and many of them will not be available. So either you have, well, let's say for for this very tool, you need to have ChatGPT API access and you need to pay for tokens and uh, you will have to uh, to overcome those obstacles. And we don't have uh, much alternatives at the moment. However, there are uh, quite a few uh, notable open source models. Uh, well, uh, I think covering of the open source models and their possibilities could be uh, a separate master's program uh, because there are so many of them and their interactions uh, create opportunities for building uh, autonomous uh, AI agents uh, which would do uh, the analyst job 24-7. And I think there will be a switch in the analyst role uh, from the person who does uh, some routine to a person who thinks and 
formulates questions. So probably this shift should be reflected in in all the academia, in the teachings, uh, in the in the approach uh, we we deliver to the students and to the business. And in terms of consultancy, uh, any consultancy, uh, well. Uh, we definitely understand there is a hype around artificial intelligence right now, and business is looking for uh, for providers or for uh, experts who are aware of the uh, sophisticated tools, and they would be well. Uh, of course, business in in a wide sense, they would um, any commercial organization would would love to have uh, a sophisticated approach and sophisticated tools. And um, I think academia that is not aware of uh, of uh, cutting edge technologies is is going to to become um, archaic and rudiment and maybe will not be able to provide any uh, any actionable solutions for uh, for business entities. So this is uh, well, what I'm talking about is merely the necessity to survive for the academia and i think it is a great uh great opportunity to become a pioneer in in russia because everybody thinks about it but nobody does uh also uh i expect in the, in the next i would say three to six months uh a rising of uh, of uh large uh, language models in russia made by Sberbank and Yandex and so on. So uh, in order to become uh, practitioners uh, and to prepare future practitioners, we need to be aware of their differences compared to other uh, models and so on. Uh, you know, I just recently watched uh, a few a few lectures from the MIT dedicated purely to uh, to artificial intelligence, different methods of uh, learning and um, large language models, and the questions that those professors uh, arise, well, they they are pretty much uh, different from what we are talking here, not in this very room, but uh, uh, on, on different panels and different uh, different working groups here in Russia. Uh, they they definitely say that this topic is novel and uh, well we we are here to learn together. But let's say they are asking questions about uh, computational powers um, available to the academia compared to big corporations, and the obstacle for them and for their labs is uh, inability to train their own models <clears throat> because of the lack of computational powers. Uh, we don't have these problems here because we don't train our models. We barely use uh, available open source models on the market. So uh, I was not preparing for this uh, speech. Uh, and well, if Ivan Alexandrovich asks me to come, I come and then I ask questions. But anyway, uh, this is my observation. Um, uh, uh, I would be happy to discuss in details and probably uh, refer you to some practitioners, but this uh, topic is here to stay. And probably this is an opportunity to be attractive both for students and for business in terms of consultancy and in terms of maybe even some scientific uh, cutting edge research that is required for, for uh, current situation with uh, actually lack of uh, Russian national tools, which are to be built. Thank you very much. I think that was the five minutes uh, uh, exactly. Ruslan, thank you, thank you very much. If we could count on, count on you for this presentation in cutting edge technology in an eye development, it could be really great. I think that, yes, it could be really great. Well, um, Ivan Alexandrovich, so probably we should move. No, no. I just want, I, yes, yes, we, we can uh, switch to Alexander. Ruslan, oh. thank you very much. Thank you, Ruslan, thank you very much. It was a great pleasure, yes. And finally, we have one more 
discussant here, right? Alexander, who is also partial in academia and in industry, and also could share uh, his vision on consultancy and statistical consulting, both in academia and in industry. Okay, uh, Alexander, the floor is yours. You're welcome. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Alexander Pahomov, and um, nowadays I'm the head of the client experience research in the InfoWatch company. And also I'm the first year PhD students and also uh, <clears throat> the part of the INR lab also. Uh, I think I am have five to uh, five, to five um, 50 to 50 in my life, uh, in the business and the academia. Um, um, I think I will ground this discussion a little bit because our discussion make like more higher higher to the higher more uh to the higher um, material but at the same time we start from the consulting and uh, finish by ai and i am i think there is only one means the paradigm is the paradigm of the in-house researcher or research lead like me because at the same time there is some difference, but it's also this is also interested works, because uh, in the in houses we also need uh, this <clears throat> method, these methods, uh, and the analysis of the statistics. Uh, by the uh, by, my experience, there is some more interesting way to using also these uh, methods is working concretely with the maybe some small professional um, groups. Uh, in my experience, I work with the farmers. Uh, I work with the, uh, also like Rustana, with the inf uh, with inf informed security uh, and the security officers uh, nowadays. Uh, and there is some interesting point for, for you and from um, the other guys and for the people who will watch this is the people for working with the open source like uh forums with the special with uh, them some rare specialist and just like that there is a lot of forums who said oh okay you can make you can make a little bit analysis uh, analysis for us yeah okay it is more work like some social goals for this uh little uh, professional communities and from the business because they need to know um, about this, about these peoples. And also there is some interesting points. Um, I think uh, there is some vector of the discussion where you say, oh, in-house is more like complicated, just like this. No, it's also working. Uh, for me, I work in in-house only because one thinks I love to uh, to learn the legacy, the legacy of working with these data, working with this business process, and also I will be the, a client for the for the for the statistical consult, also because um, I work on the front line in the business process here. I work with this data. I know these people. I know the people who will uh, sorry. Uh, who will make the decisions on this data. And also, I I, I have a proposition that uh, we speak about the statistical consult and any types of research, concretely, if we talk about the customer experience, statistical consult, econometrical analysis, the, we make it for, make the discussion, for make some, solutions uh, and uh, maybe the salute some business process pain also uh, so I think uh, it's more not just like that science I think it's uh, for the experience and uh, legacy engineers in the companies also and the statistics is our um, future it's a future solution uh, maybe this uh, context will be work uh, in my proposition. I work for the three years already in the in-houses and there is some data who doesn't understand the uh, the directors on the one year but you have the second year and oh, we have this data. 
and just like this uh, also if you work in houses and some some people from the master program will work in houses you need to know if you have one type uh, problem with the some data or research you need to save it after the sometimes you 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 can reuse it and uh, for the people who work i think stanislav will be um, also on this position you need to work on the legacy also um when you work on the statistics and any types of research and so thank you a lot i'm <laughs> that's all i can say okay alexander thank you thank you very much so i think we could move to the questions right and probably i have the first question to stanislav probably in the first place uh well mm, talking about hard and soft skills that was really great slide about expectations but coming to hard skills um if you bring a project for example to university for students of master program to work on this project what sort of hard skills or specific methods so which specific methods you expect from the students to be aware of so for example you bring a project and say so here i have data you can work on that provide some sort of solution but i expect you to have the skills in so this in what is this what this could be this obligatory part so as a must Actually, great questions. Uh, great question. Thank you. Thank you, Rina. Uh, it depends. Uh, <laughs> it usually depends because so, so uh, I could I could say what I expect from our students. Uh, let's put it in that way because you know uh, we may expect different things from people who are studying gen generally statistical methods. Um, uh, so I suppose that what is different, uh, I, and I could put it in that way, uh, for our students, I would expect that uh, uh, they uh, must be able to apply from the one hand uh, traditional methods of uh, statistics. Yeah, uh, basic like, re and... like regression, like regression. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, like regression and uh, all methods which are dealing with not relational data uh, let me put it in, the, in that way and on the other hand i would expect that they also able to apply network analysis methods because it's uh, uh, it's important feature of our program and uh, because we are trying to show how to use these specific instruments and how to combine them how for example to put uh, network variables in regression, uh, regression formula and how to uh, uh, make regression analysis uh, with uh, network and not network data. And also, uh, uh, of course, uh, I expect that they uh, they might be able to uh, apply some complex uh, uh, probability methods uh, from network analysis, like experimental random graph modeling or P-star modeling. Uh, so on and so forth. Uh, actually, last year we did not offer such opportunity to apply this method, but at least I expect that they know how to deal with it. Yeah, and uh, but when we, when I was talking about uh, traditional statistics, uh, so it's, it's not regression. Usually, it's something. Uh, sometimes it's maybe maybe that simple, but sometimes it's also require them to you know uh, something more complicated yeah and more sophisticated like uh, mm, I, I was uh, uh, I, I mentioned like uh, random forest neural networks uh, uh, Ruslan uh, mentioned deep learning learning algorithms but yeah uh, the whole family I, I would say <laughs> mm -hmm. okay great and one one short question as a continuation so uh i would uh, how to put the question this way how common in the market you 
you can find uh, probably specialists who know how to work with network analysis. So in terms of their uh, market of different professionals who want to work as uh, data analysts or statistical consultants, uh, how common is the knowledge? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so the the simple answer is I don't know because I've never I was never trying to find to make it more complicated uh, and more correct. Uh, uh, so it's very rare knowledge, uh, and uh, it's not unique already, but it's still very rare because you know uh, I do not know actually. Uh, lots of programs which are really dealing with network analysis uh, in Russia nowadays. And uh, for example, when we are looking for uh, data analysts and big data analysts uh, at Aventica, we don't have such requirement and no, uh, as knowledge in uh, network analysis because we understand that it's a very narrow search. But of course, we we, we are putting into uh, resume that uh, into vacations that it would be great if you know because if you will come to us, you will have to deal with it. But we we can teach you, you know. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, uh, that's that's why I, I put it uh, uh, in my first uh, answer. I suppose it's a very good additional uh, point, and uh, so very. It's great differentiating point for any professional who will work with uh, data to know how to deal with networks because it's very important skill nowadays. Thank you. Okay, great, great. Thank you, Stanislav, very much. So, any question? So you're welcome to ask questions. You may write down your questions in the chat. We also can ask questions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I suppose uh, I just uh, want to uh, ask uh, both uh, Ivan and Alexander. So we uh, touch this topic of difference between uh, uh, statistical consulting project in academia and in uh, industry. Uh, uh, but we uh, we never until yet yeah uh, give the direct answer. So from your point of view, uh, from uh, uh, your experience, what is the most important difference uh, from the point of requirements to the statistician uh, or consultant, or maybe from the point of project structure? Uh, in academia uh, and in industry, how would you answer this question? Because I suppose it's crucial for uh, our future listeners. Hmm. Can I start maybe on the answer to this question? Sure, sure. I think, I think this will be one that I think um, hard things is languages and just only. Um, there are some points um, if we thought about as me as the maybe client from the from the consultant from the academia or from the um, business part in in my experience when uh, my uh, department say department say oh we don't have a specialist for in making this research in houses we need to uh, maybe have a we need to go to the any research agency. Uh, if it, if I told about my my beloved farmers, uh, I don't even want to um, work with the uh, some research agency who doesn't work with this group because it's pretty hard group. It's pretty understandable by the first time group, and I spend. I think. Uh, a million of hours uh, to explain how work with it, uh, but I can uh, in, concretely in the HSA, yeah, um work with uh, some institutes working with the uh, farmer studies or just like this. And there is some people with legacy; they know the group and just like this. But it's it's if we thought about the small groups and uh, I think pretty I think a little bit deviance here. 
uh but on the mass market uh firstly is what we know about what total about business about the academia oh it's hard languages it's hard to understand i don't know how to use it i think it's um doesn't write it doesn't try opinion because uh academia is academia business consult is business consult business consult working on the some audits or just like this i working in the laboratory wonderful is uh, customer experience consult with the academic firstly legacy also uh which means uh if you thought about the universities in academia uh i think there is some different client, clients here by the mass type is more um the research agency and there is a lot and there is just like the mushrooms after the rain uh but if we thought about any serious researchers is more for academia is um about the legacy about the interpretation i know the cases where we have research agency we make the uh, data sets and go to the university to analyze it for the interpretation uh so uh, in the academia this will be also the type of expert knowledge and uh, by the way the academia people in my working when i work with the people with the academia uh, with the high academic grade also who already wor work in the business there is different they think different they are more maybe uh, some in some points adaptive and some points uh, they are more profound the, they are easily work with data. They are work uh, on the complex. In in my work, it's customer experience. It's where you use it. You need to have a scenario working with it. And these people always think, oh, I have a data. I have an analysis. I have an analysis that, I, that can be understood by my director. And I know how to make this research in the solution and this solution will be argue, will be argumented to them to make it to realize it so um, by the way um, there is no difference but uh it's something like brands the problem of branding uh because there is some more um lightly in the research agency than the academia but uh i think for a lot of people here and who will watch on this in the video a lot of people who work half on in the business half on the kid half on academia work in the research agency which means you already have the same the, the same people working here okay okay great i would suggest uh to sum up with the final answer if we have and then concluding remarks so maybe Van Alexandrovich also has the answer but we to this question. Have a question. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, should I read the question? Probably. Yes, uh, we have a question from Maria. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. May I ask a tricky question? Have you ever thought of choosing the students of your program as an object for the research? How do you think what topic, problem, object of such a research could be in order to improve the process of education of your program and other online programs? Uh, yeah, I, I I can make a short, uh, a brief answer. Yes, uh, we, uh, we are thinking about it. And, uh, you know, uh, every year uh, we did it at least twice. Uh, the first uh, time it's um, some kind of research uh, when we are uh, organized um, uh, the uh, company for uh, new students uh, when we are talking with them when we are um, uh, examining uh, their uh, portfolio and uh, the second time uh, when uh, we uh, after the fi uh, final exams and uh, uh, final uh, defense of master thesis 
uh, we uh, we are talking about uh, about our program with our um, students, and uh, we really got uh, this this year we really got uh, uh, brilliant and uh, very practical ideas from them, and. Um, Mm, but I think uh, we can make uh, we can kind of conduct uh, some kind of academic research and uh, um, a business cons consulting for ourselves. I would also like to step in here very briefly with an answer. I think this is a great question, and I would suggest to transfer such a question about students, online students as an object to research, to uh, the department responsible for online programs, because as you know, this year, High School of Economics has launched uh, such a great environment, which is called online campus so we have bachelor programs undergraduate and graduate programs and i think that probably in terms of research project i think this department would be quite an interested in probably yes formulating the research questions collecting data and then yes providing coming up to some conclusions Well, maybe I, I would suggest Stanislav to make some concluding remarks because we are running out of time. Probably we should sum up. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, let's sum up. I suppose that uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, all of uh, our speakers today and uh, Irina, you for uh, great moderation. Uh, um, I suppose that we covered different topics uh, and we managed to discuss this area of statistical consulting from different point of views. And uh, we had some, you know, uh, uh, this general uh, helicopter view of uh, uh, the profession and this professional field. We had a great empirical example of study uh, with network analysis and some kind of issues uh, uh, and problems uh, which was il illustrated uh, by this example. And you know, very nice uh, 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 and like real life uh, interruption from Ruslan who told us, guys, you should uh, look into the area of AI because it's, you know, uh, very important and it's important to pay attention to this AI assistant who can help consultants nowadays to write the code, for example, uh, which which become very, very easy nowadays. And uh, uh, also uh, remarks and uh, uh, topic of uh, like in-house uh, job of uh, consultant and researcher, uh, which was uh, covered by Alexander at another angle uh, to uh, now discussion. Yeah, and uh, uh, I suppose our listeners now understand these different colors uh, which come with the role of consultant um, and understand uh, what to expect uh, uh, from uh, our program in that sense. Exactly, exactly, Stanislav. Thank you very much. I think all the faculty who are here from our master program, we have some takeaways from today's meeting to reflect on them, to consider and to make uh, our work in a better way, right? And probably think about future directions for development. I think we we, we are going to finish right now to sum up. Yes, uh, thank you very much, everyone who was here today with us and hope to see you soon as our students in our master program. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah.